Hi everyone, welcome to this week's episode of the BCB podcast. I'll be joined later on by Dan Moll, uh, looking ahead at all the week's action, as well as a, a packed weekend of fights, including our own BCB show at the Hangar events in Wolverhampton. But first of all, I'm thrilled to be joined by Katie Healy. Katie's in action on Friday. Thank you for joining us this evening, Katie, and how are you? Thank you for having me. I'm uh, really good, thank you. We just can't wait to get back in there Friday now. Now, it's your third professional fight. Again, you're going to be over the six rounds. Uh, or in effect, almost like being a big part of this kind of a show now. Do you feel a, sort of your your progress as a professional is going as you've hoped? You've managed to stay very active in the last year. Yeah, a hundred percent. Probably better than I expected, to be honest. Um, like you said, this is the third third fight that I've done now since May, um, and I've just been really lucky to have such a good backing from the start as well. Um, we've been making progress on progress. So looking back at my first fight and my second fight. We've kind of looked at areas that maybe needed the improvement um, and which areas I'd like done really well. Um, so, yeah, I'm really happy with the progress that I've made so far. And fingers crossed we'll see even more improvement in my next fight on Friday. Now, obviously, you're hugely experienced in the kickboxing game. Obviously, you won up to, to world level English, British and world champion. How have you found the transition from that sport to this in terms of the, the training change and also the bouts themselves? Because as much as... I know that obviously they share a lot of similarities. They are really quite different having attended those kind of events. Yeah, it's 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 been a challenge, I'm not gonna lie. Um, it was quite difficult, especially at the start, um, the whole training aspect of it all, just making that transition of maybe looking at the footwork, it's completely different, how my stance was taking the legs away from me completely. Um, in my first fight, I didn't even think about throwing a kick. A lot of people were saying to me, oh, did you feel like throwing one? And to be honest, once you've got those boots on, you don't even think about it. And because I'd done a good, probably 12 months of boxing training before that debut, I think I'd kind of just drilled it into me that kicks were no longer a thing. Um, but yeah, I think it's it's still challenging. There's still things we're picking up on that maybe I still look a bit at, like a bit of a kickboxer in certain aspects, maybe the way I'm moving or little bits here and there. Um, but like I say, we we made progress from the first fight into the second, um, and hopefully we'll see more pro progress going from the second to the third now. Um, but yeah, it, it's not been the easiest journey, and I think if you ask other kickboxers that have made that transition, they'd probably say the same thing too. Now, obviously, you had an interesting start, certainly your first professional fight, fighting out at the Sheffield Arena car park, uh, obviously during the, the first of the, sort of the lockdown return shows. Uh, what was that experience like? And are you happy now to be back in a, a normal indoor venue? Do you know what? I absolutely loved it. I think if you watch my interviews that I did post-fight, you could just tell how happy I was to be back in there. It was very strange circumstances, I must admit. First time fighting outside. It was obviously raining. It wasn't the nicest weather, so the ring was a little bit slippy. Um, but yeah, it was it was just amazing. Like like I said earlier, I've been really lucky to be to have such a good backing from the start. Um, obviously backed by Fight Zone and Dennis Hobson Promotions, and they put me on their first ever Fight Zone show, um, which was incredible. So yeah, I enjoyed every single part of it. To be honest, and it went too quickly. I think I've said this in other interviews before. Like the four rounds just went like that, and I just wanted to carry on. That was how much I was enjoying it. So I'm looking forward to it being six rounds on Friday. But having the crowds and stuff back, and even being on a home show for this show on Friday, I'm just looking forward to it so much. I I can't even describe it in, in words how excited I am. Obviously, yeah, your first fight sort of back in the Midlands, uh, where you are from. Again, your opponent on Friday, Martina Horgas, you know, someone that's got a little bit of it more experience, certainly in the professional game than yourself. What are you expecting to, to be facing in the opposite corner on Friday? Do you know, I never, ever studied an opponent. So I got, I think I got told um, her name a, a few weeks ago and I never look into it never um, and I've always said if I can't go in there and adapt within the first 30 seconds and do my game plan then that's my own fault um, but it's just it's more of a mental side for myself it's always worked for me I've never really been one to sit down and watch videos of them it's more so I've kind of left that to my coach Gavin I've kind of said you can do the studying and We'll work on bits that you think I need to for the fight, um, but I'm just going to go in there. I've been I've been training hard, um, and I'm just going to believe in my ability and and the the most important part, just have fun in there on Friday. 
Now, so you mentioned Gavin there, obviously the training setup there at the Trojan Gym. It's certainly uh, been, been a successful setup the last few years. Obviously, women's boxing is in a particularly good place as well. Um, obviously, opportunities seem to come quite quickly uh, in, in the women's game. Weight-wise, where do you kind of see yourself? What weight class do you see yourself fitting in? Because at the moment, obviously, I know there's you could probably strafe between a couple. Yeah, I'm, I'm quite happy at the super bantam weight for now. Um, I felt quite comfortable at that weight back in the kickboxing. So that was kind of a, a good weight category to go in straight away at the boxing. <clears throat> but for my last fight, I had to go up into the next weight category um, because we did have a couple of pullouts at the super bantam weight um, division. Um, and that was absolutely fine. To be honest, I, I found it quite enjoyable because it was nice to fight someone the same height as me in the super band and white category, they tend to be a little bit smaller. Um, but I'd, I'd never say never to even going down as well. Um, like for my first fight, I weighed in quite light for the super band and white category. Um, and that wasn't putting too much pressure on my diet or anything either. So I could potentially go down to that band and white too. So I think what we'll do is see what opportunities come up. Um, and over the next couple of years, I've said to Gab, I'm up for any fight. And I trust his instinct. If he says I can go in there and he believes that I can put on a good performance and win, um, then I'll follow his guidance there as well. Now, we talk a lot on this podcast sort of about inspiration and what got you into the sport. I know uh, Ronda Rousey certainly was a, a big favourite of yours when you were involved in the kickboxing game. Obviously, when you made that transition over to, to boxing, is there anyone that really kind of stands out? Obviously, I know you've trained along the likes of Rachel Ball for a number of years. But is there anyone that you kind of keep an eye on that you think, you know, male or female that you, you really admire and enjoy watching? I think a big one for me, it's, it's probably the same for a lot of female box at the minute. It's It's got to be Katie Taylor. Um, she's done so much for the sport and she's just that absolutely phenomenal to watch. Um, I was quite lucky to actually meet her as well, um, not long back at a Gymshark event. Um, and I must say she was even she was just so lovely in person too, so humble. Um, she did a bit of a QA, so we got to know a bit more about her, her background, um, just a little bit better. We even got to meet her mom too. Um, but I think it's just having people like her in the sport that you can kind of look her up to and she's achieved so much and she's done so much for the sport as a whole. It is really inspiring, um, but the sport is just growing day by day. There's so many female fighters that I, I just love watching. Another one's probably Savannah Marshall. Every time I watch her, I'm just like, how does she do it? She doesn't look like she even goes out of second gear. Um, but yeah, for me, I'd definitely say Katie Taylor, but there's a lot of other names that I'll be like, oh, I've got to sit down on Saturday night and watch that fight. Um, and everyone you watch in there, it's just that, they all put on a good show. So every single fight is gives you that kind of motivational buzz, especially when you've got a fight coming up. It just makes you think, I want to get in there now. Now, obviously, you managed to do the right thing by getting your fight this side of Christmas. Whenever we speak to a lot of the guys on the podcast, it's always a case of seeing what's the first thing you're going to do when the fight's out of the way. Uh, half of them end up going to uh, Five Guys or down the Indian. What's your, uh, what will you be your choice on Friday night? It's got to be my standard pizza. I think I've definitely uh, <laughs> got my love out there now for how much I do love a good pizza. Um, but I've, I've been quite lucky to have a good crowd come as well on Friday. Um, so once I've been in the ring and I'm out, I'll be getting dressed up and we'll all be going out afterwards. Um, and I'll probably finish it off with a very fat takeaway, extra large pepperoni, pre pepperoni pizza all to myself. <laughs> Now, like I know from uh, from reading past interviews of yourself, like me, you're involved in the exciting world of tyres. Uh, so, obviously, Christmas time, a little bit of time off. What's uh, what's Christmas Day look like in the Healy household? Do you know what? I don't know what it is about this year, but I'm really looking forward to Christmas. Like, I've never felt this festive. I don't know whether it's because last year was a little bit different. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I am really looking forward to it. So, for Christmas Day, um, I'll spend the morning just standard getting up opening presents and then I'll go to my mum and dad's house we're going to go out for Christmas dinner fingers crossed Boris does not cancel anything because I've been looking forward to this Christmas dinner for a long time um, and I've got a really big family so Christmas usually just is where like we all go to my brothers my sister's houses they've got children so it's all about that aspect for me um, and then I've got so much planned over Christmas. I think it's because I've had this fight. I've just been really looking forward to doing stuff over the over the season, really, because I haven't been able to do anything all December. Um, so, yeah, I've got quite a lot planned. And uh, just finally, just, just a quick word for those that are coming down to see yourself on Friday. 
so you are building this support um, and you're certainly doing, I think from, from the outside looking in, you're doing a good job of getting your name out there. Uh, just a quick word uh, to, to those guys coming to support you and everyone that's been involved in the journey so far. I think it's just a big thank you, really. Um, I put a post up on my social media today just to thank everyone that's bought tickets to come and watch. It means so much. It really does. And I think every single boxer would say the same. Just being on your home ground and having everyone shouting your name and having that atmosphere to come out to when you walk out. It's just, it's the best feeling in the world. Um, and I've had just so many messages um, on all social media platforms. People have been reaching out to me. And even just a simple good luck message, it really does mean the world. And it just you just know that you've kind of got everyone's support, whether they're sitting back at home or whether they're actually at the venue. Um, so now just a really, really big thank you to everybody, really. And I hope I do everyone proud on Friday. Absolutely. Well, Katie, wish you the best of luck. Uh, that show at the H Suite in Edgebaston in Birmingham this Friday night. Uh, three fight card over in Birmingham. So if you're around in the area, you want to get a night of boxing, pop down and see the show. Katie, thank you very much for joining us and wish you the best of luck on Friday. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me. Cheers. Ty.